Hi everybody, welcome back to Darling Borough Model Railway. My name's Richard. It's been a little while, um, but both models are now completely dry. All the plaster's set, everything's nice and solid. I've even had Nathan on the case doing a bit of a test just to make sure everything's uh, set firmly. He's been picking them up and playing with them, dropping them around. So far nothing's broke off, which is great. So, in my mind, if a two-year-old playing with a piece of terrain is not going to break it, then it will be absolutely ideal if you're using it for tabletop gaming, which is kind of what I had in mind. What I'm going to be doing this week is I'm going to be looking at the painting techniques that are going to be used to paint them. Now, because of the way they've been constructed, I will have to paint them in completely different ways. With the plaster model, I'm going to be using wet techniques, and with the rock moulds that I've uh, created using bark, I'm going to be using a dry technique. So let's look at both of them now. For the rocks that have been created using plaster, I'm going to be using the leopard spotting technique. This involves using multiple coloured washes painted over areas of the rock. This will then be covered with a darker wash which ties all the colours together. It's a very quick and easy technique to use. It can be quite messy, so what I've done is I've put some paper down underneath the work surface I'll be using. The four colours to use is yellow ochre, a light brown burnt sienna, a dark brown burnt umber and black. Cheap acrylic paint is ideal for this, as it will be watered down anyway. You will need some tubs to mix it one for each colour. You will need some water, some PVA glue and a spray bottle or some pipettes to apply the glue. You will also need some paint brushes. Cheap artist's paint brushes are fine or you can use decorating paint brushes. Try and go for ones with soft bristles. The first thing I had to do was paint the areas where I want the green terrain to go. When I was painting these areas, I just splashed the paint on. I wasn't particularly neat about it. I just made sure that everything had a good coverage. The idea is that eventually these areas will be covered in green flock or static grasses. And the idea is that it kind of resembles earth or dirt or mud that will be under grass and sort of uh, natural materials anyway. I started off using a burnt umber, a uh, burnt sienna mix. Um, it was a little bit too orangey and ready for my liking. So what I did was I remixed in some brown emulsion paint from a tester pot that I had lying around. And this seemed to do the trick. I made sure that I covered all of the areas that I will be covering with grass and flocks. However, I avoided any areas that will have the rock features on them. What we'll be doing now is applying the washes over everything else. What you will need to do is apply a small drop of each of the paints to a separate container. Add water and mix to create a wash. With the yellow ochre and burnt sienna, you will need to create a slightly thicker wash than the dark umber. When it comes to black wash, this needs to be very, very watered down. Once you have watered down the paint, take a brush and start to dab on yellow ochre over the rocks. You don't need to be particularly neat, however, don't cover the entire rocks. Leave gaps between where you apply the paint. Allow this area to dry. If you are in a hurry, you can use a hairdryer to speed up the process. Once the yellow ochre has dried, repeat the process with the burnt sienna. Again, don't cover the entire rock face. It's always good to leave some areas of white showing before you apply the next cover. Again, leave this to dry or use the hairdryer. At this stage, I'm not going to lie, it looks a complete mess. It looks like I've completely ruined it. But, have faith. What we'll be doing now is applying the washes over everything else. 
and it will tie all the paints and the colours together. Once the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre have both dried, you can then apply a very very thin wash using the dark brown burnt umber. As you can see, the colours are already starting to tie in together, and I've only applied one or two coats so far. I felt the brown wash was a little bit too thin, so I did add a couple of extra drops and went over the model again. This seemed to help because it tied the colours together a lot better. If you're finding it's not quite dark enough, don't worry, because there's still another layer of black that we'll be applying afterwards. Once the dark brown wash has been applied and dried, you will need to apply a watered down PVA mixture. This will help seal the paint together and prepare it for the final wash. Once the PVA and water mixture has dried, what you then do is create a black wash using black acrylic paint and water. This needs to be diluted much more than the other paints as it will be a thin wash that covers the whole model. If you find it is too thin, then simply add a little bit more black paint. You can always add extra layers if you want to build up and make things darker. The black wash will naturally find its way into the deep grooves and cracks. This is perfect because it naturally portrays a dark shadow which would appear naturally on a rock face. I had quite a bit of wash left over, so I just basically covered the rest of the model, the muddy texture um, with the black wash paint. Won't do any harm, as I say all it will do is make it a little bit darker, but it will be covered with the green flock and scenic material anyway. As you can see, once the paint has dried, under natural light it looks really really effective. The rocks do look really good. Now I noticed that I missed a little bit, um, there was a little gap where I didn't quite cover the polystyrene properly. Um, but then I realised that worst case scenario, I can just cover it up with some scenic material. That's the best thing about modelling. If you make a mistake, you can cover it up with something. Not a problem. With the model that used the bark pieces, the first thing I needed to do was give it a spray with some black matte spray paint. I mainly focused on the rocks themselves as I would be painting the hill area separately. I made sure I sprayed it from all angles, getting into all of the uh, little nooks and crannies and making sure that I didn't miss anything. Now if you are using spray paint, obviously use it in a well ventilated area. If you are using it indoors, either use a mask or if you can, get like a spray booth which will extract the fumes away from you. Um, I was lucky enough I could use it outdoors because it wasn't raining earlier. Um, so I used it just in the garden. Perfect. You are looking for a matte finish because it will dry and it will look chalky like rocks. If you are using, for example, a satin finish or a glossy finish, it will not give you the effect that you're after. The satin and the gloss will be too shiny um, to actually use as effective rocks. With both of the models, the areas that will carry the flock should be primed with a dark brown colour. I'm simply painting cheap acrylic brown paint over the areas where there will be greenery. With the plaster based terrain piece, however, the rocks are not painted first. I will have to paint them after I've painted where I want the green terrain to go. To dry brush, you will need several shades of progressively lighter paints. Now the paint that you use isn't particularly important because you will be using very little of it. You can use acrylic paint for this. However, you can also use emulsion paint a good way to obtain a range of colours is to go to a local DIY shop and look for the tester pots available. I tend to use a mixture of greys, creams, whites, even yellows.
When I use the dry brushing technique, first of all I start off with the darkest colour I plan on using. For this model I chose to use a mixture of black and a dark grey. Rather than using them straight out of the pot, I just randomly mixed them together and then used a piece of toilet roll and dried as much of the paint off the brush as possible before painting it all over the rock face on the model. As you notice, when I paint over the model, the thick grooves that are covered in the black spray paint don't get touched. This is great because it represents deep cracks and shadows where you would naturally find in rock faces. Once you are happy with this layer, then repeat this with progressively lighter shades of greys, blues, creams and yellows. As you go to each new colour, apply less and less paint to your model. When applying the highlights, I tend to try and brush from the top downwards as this is naturally where sunlight would appear. Remember, rocks will be lighter at the top than they will be underneath. So there you go, two completely different methods to building terrain or scenery, uh, which you can use for your model railway or your terrain pieces for your wargaming. Both are equally as effective, in my opinion. What is your favourite? Do you have a preference? Drop me a comment in the comments down below or as I say you can leave me a comment up here, uh, all the details are here. Now you'll notice obviously now they look completely different, um, that's basically just down to the colours that I've used. I'm sure that if you had used matching colours um, you can actually get them to look really really similar. Um, I wanted to use different colours because obviously I want to demonstrate the techniques differently um, but as I say you know you can use a variety of different colors for example you could use browns you could use grays you could use you know a mixture of like purples or if you want to look for maybe something a bit more sort of science fictiony it's entirely up to you really um what i'm going to be doing is next week i'm going to be looking at the uh, finishing off the model a bit of scenery uh, green grass cover uh, using flocks that sort of thing just to get it finished and then sort of i'll compare the final techniques um, at the end. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you do feel obliged, uh, please buy me a coffee. I would appreciate it. I will be posting these videos here, um, and in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.